Are you about to start an off-grid homestead journey and you just feel completely unqualified? Are you starting a YouTube channel and you're a bit insecure about how you might come across? Do you have a feeling of imposter syndrome? Yeah, me too. <laughs> hey, I'm Jason and this is A Great Alternative. The channel is about myself, my wife Alicia and our dog Echo starting an off-grid small holding in um, Wales. Also, the channel is about us meeting various people that kind of are within this industry and, and learning from them. But I want to delve into that a bit more later on. Focus, yeah, good. First things first, I didn't pick this just because it's a pretty backdrop. This is a down-to-earth channel. I'm not gonna come to some epic location without reason just for a small clip in a YouTube video. I chose it because it's one of the quietest places that's nearest to the caravan that we're staying in. What I want to talk about in this video is some of the insecurities that I'm feeling in regards to starting an off-grid journey, starting this channel, but also I want to talk about how I'm trying to harness that feeling and use it as a kind of power for good in future projects that we're going to do. To do this, I need to tell you a little bit about me. I run my own video production company, which I started straight out of university while Nando's was paying my rent and I turned it from a small hobby until into a full-time business. I've been doing so for about a decade. I work with customers all over the UK and there isn't a day that goes by that I don't feel sometimes like a bit of an imposter or that I'm gonna get called out by not really being a professional. So I'll tell you what, let me give you an example. First one is a multi-million pound company that I was working for. They'd, they'd taken a bit of a punt in getting me in to do their full company promo and that involved filming all across the globe because they've got sites in almost every continent and it was it involved a fair bit of money even though the crew was basically just myself and one other so that's finished normally what happens is i would just send a youtube link and you know that i get an email back oh we like it or inevitably there's 50 different changes that are oh we wanted it to be uh, can you turn that title to caps oh no wait no we no we don't like caps and so on and so forth <laughs> But this time, what it was that they wanted me to come in and basically pitch and show the video to the whole board of directors. So me, um, suited and booted, two other guys from the company who I worked with to do the project, and then this board of directors, all twice my age, and all probably five times my salary. And they're looking at me and expecting something amazing. Another example is when I got to work for this amazing theatre company that does high class stuff that's all over the UK and have been going for a, a long time and I got the chance to shoot a kind of music video from one of their performances for a show that was about to come out to help promote it. But this involved me basically being in charge of about 40 dancers, choreographers, actors, producers, directors, again all with decades of experience within this industry and me who likes to shoot music videos sometimes. <laughs> in both of these moments I couldn't have felt more like an imposter and like someone was just going to basically be like okay when's the professional going to get here. In the beginning one of the ways that I thought I could overcome this was by always being suited and booted, always being dressed to the nines because that's what everyone else looked like. That's what all the suits that I was filming that's how they were dressed. Another was deliberately trying to fake my way through it. So like enhancing and kind of inflating my ex expertise and uh, my knowledge because I just felt so insecure that, oh, they wouldn't want this, you know, 23, 25 year old. He's clearly not experienced enough, clearly doesn't know what he's doing, you know, so we would never hire him. And obviously in doing this, it was just, it wasn't, it wasn't true, it wasn't me. So it was a detriment to me, to my work and to potentially the relationships that I was, I was having with different people. But <laughs> there were two things that helped me out massively. The first one was that although it felt like it was that kind of spotlight syndrome that you know you feel like you're always being watched and being judged and people are always focusing on you, that's bullshit. <laughs> Obviously, people have got their own stuff to deal with. Let me go back to the examples that I mentioned. In the first one, this board of directors, I'm there worrying about what everyone thinks. Firstly, the two people I went in with, they were just bothered about keeping their job because if they did a bad job, they'd probably get fired. 
And if they didn't like the video, they'd probably get fired. So all they, cared, all they cared about was their own skin. Fair enough. The other board directors were just bothered about what the CEO thought. So they couldn't really care less because they were too worried about disagreeing with him. So it ended up that there was only one person in the room that was really invested in that in the video and working with me. And it turned out he was a really down-to-earth bloke and I could work with him and I could kind of converse with him in a quite relaxed manner. Let me give you the other example. Very first shot that we're about to do, we're about to film with this actor that is, she's, she's worked all over the world in films, you know, Bollywood, you know, Bollywood films, Hollywood films, commercials, down to the thing that she was doing with me. And in the very first take, she got a little flustered and was got a, got a little kind of nervous because she was kind of messing up her lines and, and, and was really apologetic and almost got a bit upset. And I remember thinking, why should you care? It's me. What you know? What do you care that I'm? I might be like, oh, well, it's just not done so very well. Like, what? Clearly, it was because she was so invested and so passionate about what she wanted to do that she wanted it to be perfect. And she was again had that I guess that spotlight feeling that oh, everyone's w w judging me and everything I do, every minor mistake is going to be highlighted and and maybe mean that she might not get future jobs. So again, had the furthest thing from her thought was, is that cameraman any good? <laughs> the reality is, people have their own <laughs> to deal with, and when you realise that, it's it's liberating. We've got someone playing in the background, which is also why I ventured this far in, almost fallen over like three times. Um, so you know, dedicated to this YouTube game. Anyway, next. The second thing was not only to acknowledge my feeling of um, being out of depth, but harnessing it in a, in a positive way. I'm going to say this, I'm going to read the quote out because it's something from a TED talk that I watched on imposter syndrome and, and, and it really kind of stuck with me. Don't question yourself, question your ideas and your knowledge and don't be afraid to ask for advice. And I think that's a really good way of putting it because your passion is your superpower. So whether that is for, for myself, it's for creating videos and content, it might be for farming, it might be for performing on stage, whatever it is, your passion is what means you're gonna continually grow, you're gonna continually challenge yourself because people who aren't passionate about something, like the things that I'm not passionate about, I don't sit there in my free time trying to better myself in that area or by, by whether it be by as simple as watching YouTube videos about how to do something up to, you know, practicing and coming out and doing a vlog for the first time and hoping that it's going well. <laughs> Another link that I really like, um, I'll put the link in the video here, it's to Ali Abdal's video on YouTube and um, the quotes that he said in that be a guide, not a guru. And, and what he means by that is a guru is someone who comes down from the mountains and says, I know everything, I'm the boss. Whereas a guru is at the same level as those people and a guru is basically there to just say, okay, so I do know some stuff, but I'm learning as well, just the same as you know some stuff and you're learning, but it might not be the same, so I'm gonna help you along my journey. This brings me onto one of the main reasons I made this video and one of the big sets of projects going forward on this channel and also it's why Alicia's not with me in this video because this is going to be mainly my thing. Like I mentioned I'm a bit insecure in regards to my skills and expertise when it comes to just a lot of the general homestead skills uh, you know whether they be DIY skills, bushcraft skills, um, craft skills, you know working with natural materials and just generally being you know at <laughs> one with your natural environment but I'm not a novice in a video and filmmaking. I've been doing it for a while now and I'm, and I'm extremely passionate about making more and I wanna to continue to challenge and grow in, in that area too. So I just thought, well, is there a way to mix the two up? So alongside the vlogs and potential tutorials and just sort of things we'll do on the channel following our journey, I want to meet and learn from other professionals. To give you an example of some of the people that we've already filmed with, Nigel Armitage, who is a leather craft worker, or leather worker, sorry, with over 30 years experience. Got another one with um, Jamie Howe, Jamie Howe, Jamie from Howell Bushcraft, uh, and he's an expert in kind of journeying bushcraft. And the first documentary that's going to be coming out on the channel 
is with Margaret, a lady who runs a company called Naturopathic Canine. And the story of the documentary, there, there will be other videos with her, but the, the main documentary is about Pug Beast, her pet dog, who through nutritional therapy and, and, and diet, I was able to live an extra five years of life after basically being given weeks to live. So if you've made it this far, firstly, thank you. <laughs> uh, this has been one of the first times I've done something like this, especially with it kind of half planned. But I want to ask you for another favor. We're right at the start of this journey. So I've started contacting people already, but I am actively looking for homesteaders, bushcrafters, anyone that works with natural materials. So that could be like heritage crafts, obviously growers, rearers, permaculture, all within this arena that's kind of what we're gonna hopefully continue with. If that's you, and you'd like to potentially be interested in working with myself, please comment below, give me a shout, emails on uh, our channel as well. And yeah, hopefully then we might be able to work on something together. I'm hoping majority of the time it might be that it's a bit of a service exchange that maybe you know some skills and expertise gets or maybe even the products depending on what it is that you do um, can go and kind of get swapped for my skills and expertise and also maybe some you know video and photography that can be for your own channel or for your promotional material so subscribe obviously and uh, yeah <laughs> let us know below lastly do you have any advice for someone like ourselves who might be starting an off-grid homesteading journey, they might be um, starting a brand new YouTube channel, or even just starting a new venture, you know, a new business, and, and something that they're maybe trying to turn from a hobby that they're passionate about into something that actually can kind of pay the rent, um, or you know, put food on the table. So if you do have any hints, tips, tricks, put them down in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end and hearing me rattle on. If you're interested in watching more videos that we do and, and kind of joining us, go on Facebook, we're on Instagram, or just subscribe and, you know, come back later. Anyway, thanks a lot guys, see you later. For now, I'm going to um, venture back to the caravan because my feet are getting numb because they've been now sat in the stream for uh, about 45 minutes and it's freezing cold, so see you in the next one. Hello, hello, hello. Testing the microphone. It wasn't Kim working. The last four goes that I did. <sighs> well, that's clearly way too far away. <laughs> so, hey, I'm Jason, and this is a great return. And no, I can't do it with my phone up with that. What I want to talk about in this video is. No, I've already fucked it up. Leaning forwards, making my leg hurt. <laughs> this is a bit of a weird position. Hello, YouTube. Good enough. I can't reach. <laughs> <laughs>